In this video, I will review single variable integral calculus in 10 minutes. Integrals are antiderivatives. Derivatives are anti integrals. With x denoting the variable, fx or gx denoting a function of x, and a or b or c denoting a constant, the integral rules are as follows. First, constant rule. The integral of f prime is f plus c. We can verify this by taking the first derivative of the right hand side, which is f prime plus zero. For definite integrals, we can plug in the lower limit and upper limit. Constant multiple rules. The integral of a times a function equals a times the integral of that function. The integral of a f prime is a f plus a constant. For definite integrals, we need to plug in the lower limit and upper limit. The sum difference rule. The integral of a f plus minus b g is a times the integral of f plus minus b times the integral of g. And we can plug in the lower upper limit here. The integral of a f prime plus minus b g prime is a f plus b g plus a constant. The product rule. This is from the product rule of differential calculus. Essentially, it's just dfg equals fdg plus gdf. Power rule. The integral of a times x to the power of a minus 1 is x to the power of a. We can verify this. Let's take the first derivative of the right hand side. It's going to be a times x to the power of a minus 1. The first derivative of c is 0. Or we can integrate this x to the power of a directly, which is 1 over a plus 1 times x to the power of a plus 1. Let's verify this as well. The first derivative of this part is 1 over a plus 1 times a plus 1 times x to the power of a. The result is x to the power of a. The integral of 1 over x is l1x plus a constant. Exponential functions. The integral of e to the power of x is e to the power of x plus a constant. The integral of e to the power of ax is 1 over a times e to the power of ax plus a constant. I'm using this variable substitution here by setting z equals ax. Therefore, I'm integrating 1 over a e to the power of z dz, and then the result is 1 over a e to the power of z. Remember, z equals a to the power of x. So this becomes z, this becomes z, and we put a additional a here compared to this. Therefore, we need to divide this a. Therefore, this is the result. We can verify this. The first derivative of this is 1 over a times a times e to the power of ax. The result is e to the power of ax. The integral of a to the power of x can be rewritten as the integral of e to the power of x times a constant. The constant is L and A. And then we can use this equation here. The result is 1 over L and A times e to the power of x times L and A plus a constant. And this part is simply a to the power of x. Therefore, the integral of a to the power of x is a to the power of x divided by L and A plus a constant. Logarithms. The integral of L1x is x times L1x minus x plus a constant. We can verify this easily. The first derivative of x times L1x is L1x, or you can say 1 times L1x plus x divided by x minus 1, which is L1x. Or we can use variable substitution. We set y to be L1x. And therefore, we're just integrating this y d e to the power of y. And then we use the product rule. Remember, f d g equals d f g minus g d f. So we plug in this equation here. 
and we integrate this part and this part separately. The integral of the exact differential of a function is it is itself. Therefore, we copy y times e to the power of y here. The integral of e to the power of y is e to the power of y. And y is ln x. We just plug in that. We get x times ln x minus x plus a constant. What about the logarithm of x with a different base a? So you need to know a bit logarithm. This log sub ax is ln x over ln a. So really, we just have one additional constant, 1 over ln a here. And then the result is x times ln x minus x divided by ln a and then plus a constant. Gaussian functions. The integral of e to the power of negative x squared from negative infinity to positive infinity is the square root of pi. I proved this in a different video. And what about uh, this exponential function? with e to the power of negative ax squared. Now we have to do variable substitution. We can set z to be the square root of a times x. And then we are integrating this integral of e to the power of negative z squared dz. And also we need to put 1 over square root of a here to cancel this square root of a. Therefore the result is square root of pi over a. Now trigonometric functions. The integral of cosine x is sine x, because the first derivative of sine x is cosine x. What about the integral of cosine ax? Again, variable substitution. We need to put an a here, and then we need to divide the whole integral by a. So it's going to be 1 over a times the integral of cosine ax dx. Now imagine we set z equals ax. We get sine z as the integral, and sine z is sine ax. Therefore, this is the result. The integral of sine x is negative cosine x. What about the integral of sine ax? Again, variable substitution. The result is negative 1 over a times cosine ax plus c. And also, you can take the first derivative of the right-hand side. You get 1 over 1, negative 1 over a times negative a times sine ax, which is sine ax. The integral of 1 over cosine x squared is tangent x. We can verify this by uh, taking the derivative of sine x divided by cosine x, which is 1 over cosine x squared. What about the integral of 1 sine x squared? Sine x is cosine pi over 2 minus x. And then we can rewrite this dx to be negative d pi over 2 minus x. And this is correct because, again, the exact differential of a constant is 0. So this part is simply negative dx. And then we can integrate this easily by using this function. So the result is going to be negative tangent and uh, of uh, pi over 2 minus x plus c. And tangent function of pi over 2 minus x is simply this cotangent. Therefore, the integral of 1 over sine x squared is negative cosine, I'm sorry, negative cotangent x plus a constant.